factor as for the that Riemann surface for log, but I did not get time. Therefore, you get a home assignment. all you need to do is to make stack them together and then make a branch cut to the center together so that you get perfectly aligned branch cuts and then stick them together <coughs> one more home assignment which something which i sort of hand not sort of completely hand waved last time and none of you caught me there So, let us refresh your memory. What I said last time was that you take a and I think I started from here, take a point z naught here, which is at this point and write the power series of log around z naught. So, look at the disk around z naught and then I said that this disk actually intersects goes beyond or goes above the real axis and uh, that and then I also said that once it the moment goes above the real axis this power series coincides with the log 1 z definition and I did not prove it I just said it does and none of you pointed out also. So, as a punishment for that you get this home assignment too, which is to take a point look at the disk take a point z naught oh sorry z 1 here what would that be And uh, or let us make it simple, there are too many negative signs here. So, it is just flipping this, you approach from here, this is at pi minus epsilon, and this is at as you traverse further down, it is at pi plus epsilon. And uh, let log z. around z naught b of course you know what it is it is i pi minus epsilon and we saw this last time all of this k greater than or equal to 1 minus 1 to the k minus 1 divide by k z minus z naught to the k. Okay. Now, this disk hits z 1 as well. And then what I want to say is that look at the disk at small a disk around z 1 on that disk 
this power series will coincide with the power series around z 1 and the way to prove it would be to show that this is equal to i pi plus epsilon plus k greater than equal to 1 minus 1 to the k minus 1 over k that is the power series around z 1. So, we need to show that these two are equal of course, this this equality holds for certain z s also only which are reasonably close to both z naught and z 1, but assuming all of this. Okay. So, prove that calls this. So, this clearly establishes the fact that the power series around z naught coincides with the power series around z 1. And therefore, which and that that is certainly not the power series given by the log 0 z at z 1, because it for log 0 z at z 1 will be a will have a minus epsilon plus pi here. Okay. Good. So, now let us continue, we will discuss a little bit more on this. So, this Riemann surface that you get for log z, it is again a no, mental construct to allow us to nicely visualize mapping log z, right. You can instead of looking at infinitely many log functions, this allows us to look at a single log function sending this Riemann surface to the complex plane. Now, one could argue that this is as you know, arbitrary as uh, that cutting off infinitely many log functions, you could start at any point make any branch cut at any angle and then you get different set of infinite, infinite classes, but in a very in one very interesting way the Riemann surface associated with log z is not arbitrary, it it is a it is really extremely useful besides allowing you to imagine the mapping log z in a nice fashion, it is actually useful in a very more or I say much more concrete sense. So, let us see that what is Okay, now I am going to invoke Cauchy's theorem. Um, What is this? This is integral around no, not less sorry, equal to one. This is integral around unit circle of one by z. What does Cauchy's theorem tell us? To pi i. Right, because Cauchy's theorem in general says f z over z the integral around a disk where f is analytic is 2 pi i times a f well actually z minus z naught is f z naught. So, as is z minus 0, so that is f 0. I can view this integral in another way.
1 by z is differentiation of log z and we established that it holds over all complex plane right. So, 1 by z dz equals d log z. d log z by dz times dz and d log z by dz is 1 by z. Okay. So, integral of d log z is what log z right and then there are this is circle of course, now circle there are no limits. So, one can uh, uh, see but there, there is a bit of an issue about here because about how do you exactly define this business of uh, limits here that is one thing. Secondly log z is not properly defined over this entire circle anyway. Again thinking of log z over the complex plane uh, and here let us say thinking about uh, the differential uh, not the differential the log 0 z. By the way differential of any variant of log function log 1 z log 2 z log 3 z log 0 z the differential is always 1 by z because of the difference between any of these variants is only in the constant part and that gets wiped out by differentiating. So, uh, this differential is not defined at the branch cut. So, there is one line of in case of order this is a negative real line is not defined. So, we cannot really integrate over this both of this problem can be resolved in the following way we can say we can integrate from uh, z equals e to the i minus pi plus epsilon to e to the i pi minus epsilon. Now, in this sort of this is starting point this is ending point and in this region this is very well defined and this also gives me a starting point and a finishing point. Now, by Cauchy it the well actually you do not even need Cauchy, but this is the fact use the analyticity of log z function to say that this integral is this log of this minus log of this which is two pi i minus 2 i epsilon okay. and as epsilon goes to 0 this becomes 2 pi and that matches perfectly with this Cauchy's formula. So, we could you know, do this roundabout way of integrating and get the same value. But that is not the end of story. What about or let us say in general C by Z or let us say let us say T by Z T Z. What about this? This is clearly by Cauchy's two pi i t. So I just write two pi i t is this, but if I write it in the same fashion this is equal to d log z to power t right. This is simple to verify just differentiate z to power t you get 
T by Z here. Fine. And now, if we try to do the same thing, we will fail. Why? Here the Z moves around this unit circle in the counterclockwise. But we are taking log of not Z but Z part T. So as Z moves around a circle counterclockwise, what happened to Z to the T? Z to the T will move at T times the speed of Z. So when Z will complete one circle, Z to power T will complete T circles. Right? And now we are taking log of that function, which is actually the completing T circles. So now there is really we can't really do any limit because it's there is no two end point as such here, which we can take a limit and get around this. So we can't sensibly discuss this integral over the standard view that log is infinitely there are infinitely many log maps one each from a complex plane with a branch cut to a complex plane. So it, if we adopt that view we can't really do this integration. However, if you adopt the Riemann surface view then T circles are fine because every time you complete a circle you move up. So, you are spiraling t times up and as you spiral the definition of log changes right you jump to the next log function. So, as you do it t times you will make t jumps fine and here. So, this is in uh, same as integral z power t starting from and now we do not need to start from here just to make life simple we can start at 1 start from here and do t circles and as you do one circle where does z power t goes e to the 2 pi i and you do it twice thrice t times you reach here right. Now of course this is all same there is no difference between these two values, but when we talk of taking log of this and because as every time we circle around we change the value of log function itself the first log function we start with is the log 0 which is a so log 0 of 1 is 0 log 1 of 1 is 2 pi i log 2 of 1 is 4 pi i. So, as you do a t time circle, so log this would therefore be 2 pi, this is log t of 1 minus log 0 of 1, which is 2 pi i t. And that is perfectly match, matching with the Cauchy integral. Okay. So, this allows us to view the integral in this different fashion and still make complete sense out of it. Of course, in this simple case because we can apply Cauchy's theorem directly here we get the value of integral without any problems, but when there are more complex functions sitting here instead of z to power t uh, let us say there is some f z sitting here. Then integrating so if you do this and you come here you get f prime z over f z d z 
and integrating that over a circle may not be very easy. On the other hand, if you view take this view and you look at d log f z, then all we need to do is that as z varies, we need to count or see how many times does f z wind up or wind down and that will give us a the value of the integral without worrying too much about see all we need to do is to count how many times does it wound up. I do not need to worry about exactly what path does it follow while winding up because by Cauchy's formula all paths will lead to the same integral because it is an analytic function. So, just need to see that as z moves around a closed contour and again this need not be a circle it could be any closed contour. So, as z moves around this closed contour how does f z move and how many you know levels does it go up. The moment we calculate the levels we got the integral. So, it provides a very convenient way of integrating function uh, integrals of this kind f prime z over f z d z. And when we look at zeta function this will occur very regularly. So, we need to understand this well. Yes. Is this this rotation or what does it mean to integrate a curve along the curve? This function so typically what we will have is that the function there will be f z here. So, let us look at this. So, there will be some closed surface uh, let us say some Baltic then delta r d log f z. So, that is a kind of integral we will see. So, here it says the z moves around the boundary of r. This is z is on complex plane, it just moves around the boundary of the complex plane, fine. Now, z is first sent by f to f z. Now, of course, f z sends f f z to just the complex plane right, but instead of viewing f z as lying on the complex plane we think of this as on the Riemann surface because there is a log sitting after this fine. And we calculate how many times does f z as z moves around this how many times does f z wind up around it uh, around some I would say point 0 let us say yeah around 0 is the key thing. How many times does f z wind up around 0 and that number. So, it is convenient to view f z as lying on the Riemann surface because winding means going up in a uh, circular fashion right and that number is the value of this integral that number is times 2 pi i of course. So, it is still a mental construct you can still view as f z being on the complex plane you can still do this integral by as uh, Orko pointed out by taking the limits cutting out pieces where log is not defined, but it is far more convenient to think of this lying on the Riemann surface. So, all you need to do is to study this map z to f z to evaluate this integral and as you see that as z moves in a circle how does f z move around 0.
not clear you can also think of okay if you don't want to think of riemann surface you can just think of f f mapping complex numbers to complex number and in the complex plane itself you see how fz bounds around zero it will bound does it bound one time does it bound twice does it bound three times like z to the t winds t times around zero as z moves once around zero fine so that's perfectly fine view and you can calculate the immediately conclude the value of this integral but to justify the this to be the value of the integral we have to say that fz is actually lying on this riemann surface because then we can say that log of fz is completely defined over this curve okay so the riemann surface provides a way of justifying the value of the integral okay so now we have uh, well studied the analytic functions we have also looked at uh, the power series expansion of analytic functions and we know now that every analytic function around every point expands as a power series inside a disk though so analytic function can be defined in a strange domain but there will be sort of if this is the domain of analytic function then around any point there will be disks over which a power series represents the analytic function and the size of this disk can be inferred easily you start at a point at the center and just blow up the circle as much as you can until you hit the bound one of the boundaries of the uh, the domain and that's the size of the disk on which this is well defined on which on which this uniformly converges this power series and is equal to the function and in this fashion you can just keep on defining and this can so so one thing that is clear is if it is a finite domain no it's not clear that uh, you will have that's not necessary that you will have only have a finitely many disks here it depends on the boundary if the boundary is messy then you may end up having infinitely many disks required to capture all of this now this is nice but this is still a little little unsatisfactory and the reason is that uh, first is that this power series expansion what it says is that outside the power the disk everything diverges right on every point outside the disk it's a uh, uh, it's certainly not absolutely convergent so it's generally diverges absolutely so it doesn't quite allow us to study properly i should say the singularities of an analytic function well an analytic function by definition cannot be singular in in its domain but there are certain points which are outside the domain on which the analytic function is singular now behavior of analytic function around those points is not that properly expressed by the power series expansion let's take an example is let's take just this function the simplest power possible such function 1 by z it has just one singularity at z equals 0 and if you so its domain is the entire complex plane except this point there is this puncture made at z equals 0 and that's a domain on which it is 
uh, analytic. Now, if I try to write this same function as a power series around this point z equals 0, well what I can do is I can write you know write is you know, put a circle here which converges everywhere inside this power series expansion, but which touches z equals 0. So, it is not defined then I have to cover the other regions I have to define another circle then another circle another circle. So, I have to define this multiple circles each capturing part of the behavior of the function around the singularity. So, there are times when this is good enough, but there are times when we one would like a you know simple or one single representation of the behavior around the powers around the singularity. And if for example, for this function this representation itself completely defines the function around the singularity and anywhere else. But of course, this is not power series. Okay, so that's the problem. But this also says the solution that instead of just sticking to power series, if we relax our requirement a bit and allow inverse polynomials also to occur in the powers in not the not the power series, but in in the more general series then at least certainly for this function we can just write the entire function as a single such series. And that gives rise to the notion of Lorentz series. So, this is the last concept before we dive into zeta function. So, this Lorentz series and it is um, uh, discussion for singularities will complete the basics of complex analysis. So, Lorentz series is defined as a, this is a Lorentz series is an infinite sum of this form. The only difference with power series is that we allow negative powers of 0 also to occur. So, infinitely many negative powers infinitely many positive powers. This definitely this is clearly a Lorentz series. Now, as with power series we have to understand where is this analytic? This is clearly, this is more general than power series. So, every powers, every analytic function we can write as Lorentz series around a certain region, certain region where it is analytic. So, that is that is clear. Uh, so, we need to uh, understand exactly where is a Lorentz series convergent. So, let us start with this. As the Lorentz series, and let us split it into two parts. this part is a power series and this part is a pure negative power series. Uh, 
and let us give it certain names this is a f minus z plus For f plus z, we know precisely where this is convergent. There is a disk associated with this where this is convergent. What about f minus z? So, f let me just write it down f z is convergent. Inside, and whenever I write convergent, I mean uniformly convergent, because that's the only notion of notion of convergence for power series that we will be interested in. Inside, uh, say some disk Z equals alpha. Oh, by the way, I've again eaten up the more general form here it could be it should be z minus z naught to the k. So, we are expanding the series around z naught. So, let us assume that that is 0 here. So, this we know what about this well we do not know it is negative powers of z, but it is purely negative powers. So, if we flip z and replace it with 1 minus z you get a power series. So, we know precisely where this is convergent. Is convergent or let us instead of z, let us write it as 1 over w. Okay. This is convergent inside some disk w equals beta. So, this implies just taking z to be 1 over w, this is convergent outside the disk mod z equals 1 over beta w is 1 by z. So, just replace 1 by z here the by mod w we replace by 1 over mod z and then you get z equals 1 over beta and inside gets flipped to outside. So, you can see this clearly by is writing this replacing equal to by less than equal to and that is it we know precisely the convergence of these two parts. So, therefore, F z is convergent in this analysis. So, analysis is this name for the disk with a smaller disk taken out from inside. Yes, it is possible, and then it is nowhere convergent, then it is really uh, not a very nice definition anyway. So, it will make sense only when 1 over beta is less than alpha, only then there is some region of convergence for the Lorentz series. Coming back to this example, what is the an analysis of convergence for this 0 to infinity. So, it is basically convergent everywhere except this single point 0. So, that is punctured out and that is becomes an analysis. Okay.
now it is outside this analysis is this convergent can it be convergent anyway no why well if you look at outside this analysis go beyond alpha going beyond alpha this part is convergent that is not a problem. So, this is a some finite value take any point z which is with modulus bigger than alpha this is absolutely convergent is some finite value, but this diverges. So, some diverges similarly inside below 1 minus less than 1 mono beta this diverges this converges. So, some again diverges. So, again exactly like power series it is convergent precisely inside the analysis and nowhere else. So, again this is limited in that fashion, but less limited than a power series, because this is a living example here you can capture this function just by one single Lorentz series as opposed to you know many many power series that you need. In fact, to capture this function as power series in the entire complex plane you will need infinitely many power series, because any power series start you know at any point in the complex plane can will only be able to take out a finite region from the complex plane. So, it is a more general and more powerful form of representation of an analytic function and it is a, a pretty straightforward to show that any Lorentz series inside uh, inside the analysis of convergence is analytic essentially the same proof that we used for uh, power series carries over for it. Do you remember the proof how did we show that any power series inside its disk of convergence is analytic. No, no, it is. So, what we did was we looked at truncation of power series, just limit the sum to some finitely many. One. So, that is a polynomial, polynomials are analytic, we know, right. And then, when you take the limit because of uniform convergence, the analyticity is preserved because that is by Morera's theorem. Then, you use because every polynomial is analytic, so the integral around any rectangular is 0 and then you take the limit of the these polynomials which is the power series and due to the uniform convergence we can swap the summation and integral and therefore, we get. So, that is the um, proof for analyticity of power series and the same proof really goes through here there is no difference. So, I will not prove that I will leave that to you to work out instead what I will prove is just like uh, uh, we showed for power series that around if you are given any analytic function and in and, and around any point inside the domain we can represent the analytic function as a power series right on a disk. Similarly, given any analytic function and given an, an analysis and then inside any point uh, sorry given any yeah, analytic function on a domain given any point inside that domain we can represent the 
the function as in Lorentz series inside an appropriate analysis. And the proof is actually pretty much mimics the power series proof, but there is one nice twist to it that is why I want to show it to you. For example, look here. This is a Lorentz series convergent on this domain, right? This is an analytic function also on the domain inside the punctured complex plane. This is a Lorentz series for the same function, and it is around the point z equals 0. That point is not inside the domain, it is actually a singularity. So, this Lorentz series expression this one is around a point which is not in the domain yet can be expressed as a Lorentz series around that point. Inside the domain it is always be a disk. So, that is not that interesting anyway. Yeah, then it is anyway law because it is a power series so it is a Lorentz series. So, this is not any anything interesting. So, given any z naught let us say let us try to write a statement and we will try to prove it. Uh, F z can be expressed So, f is analytic on d take any point z naught f z can be written expressed as a Lorentz series around z naught, but its analysis of convergence will be inside the domain d that we cannot escape from. So, how do we prove this? So, suppose uh, this is the domain and this is the point z naught, which is actually outside the domain. Of course, if I take z naught here, then there is no analysis of convergence, then this pointless to define anything, no analysis of convergence which fully lies inside the domain. So, it forces me to pick a point which is covered by a boundary of the domain and then I can def try to define an analysis of convergence here. Okay, so, how do we handle this? Well, let us pick An analysis which consists of two circles with centers at z naught lying completely inside the domain D. And let us say this is a alpha and this is beta. 